Thank you so much, choir. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Zach, for leading us in worship this day. Please do note in your bulletin, when we get to the sermon hymn, we are only going to sing verses 1 through 4. If I forget to say that before we sing that song, remember now. Friends, let us prepare our hearts and our minds to hear God's word, to confess that we all make mistakes, we all have flaws, and sometimes, if you're a man like me, I'm hard of hearing. Sometimes don't always hear as well as I should. So let us prepare our hearts and minds to hear God's word this day. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, you have taught us through your word, Jesus Christ, that you desire to be with us. You have taught us that we are all created in your image and that you desire us to be your family. But each and every day, through our words, through our actions, we hurt your children, our brothers and sisters. And when we hurt each other, we ultimately hurt you our gracious parents of us all. We see on the cross of Jesus Christ, you are a God who is willing to bear the price, the consequence of our sin. By the power of your Holy Spirit, wash us clean this very moment. Open our minds that we might think anew this day. Remove anything that may stop us from hearing your word. Let us now confess silently to the living Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and be at peace. Let us hear God's word in Genesis, chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. Listen now for the Holy Spirit's calling God's word to you and to me. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The reading of God's word. So guess who was folding laundry last Sunday during the Steelers game? This guy. I, I knew that illustration last week was going to cost me something. And I, I've been assessing and trying to do a little more laundry this week, a little more of the dishes this week. Um, I did feel guilty. I did feel guilty, and I'm going to apologize to Hope that I took a clean dish from the dishwasher, and I did not unload it. I'll make up for that today. I always feel guilty when I do that. 
Last week, I know the sermon title sounds ominous, divorce. Last week, we discussed what makes for good and healthy relationships. And this week, I would like to discuss how relationships break down. I'm going to follow Jesus' lead to make sure that no one hears this day, no one hears that I am condemning those who are divorced. Jesus doesn't even do that. Uh, you remember the story in the Gospel of John. Jesus is thirsty. He goes to a well in Samaria to get something to drink, and there is a woman there. And Jesus invites her to living water. He invites her to follow him to enter into good and healthy relationships. And as they are discussing the faith, Jesus says, why don't we bring your husband in on the conversation? And she says, sir, I have no husband. And Jesus looks her in the eye and says, you are right, for you have had five husbands, and you are now working on your sixth. Throughout the story, Jesus never condemns the woman, but he invites her into eternal life. He invites her into the living water to drink from Jesus Christ, to receive good and healthy relationships, not only with God, but with everyone else in her life. That is why God created us, to be in relationship with God, with neighbor. But to get there, we have to have Jesus question our souls and not play the blame game as Adam did. On the day of our death, when we face God face to face, I don't know about you, but I have a few questions for God. If I'm allowed to ask them, I will. Maybe you have a few questions of your own. But one question, if I'm allowed to ask God anything, I will ask God, why the tree? Why the tree? Why could not we have just stayed in ignorant bliss? Maybe for the, some of you out there, you might be thinking, well, it wasn't really the tree's problem. It was that crafty snake. That's who we are to blame. Husbands, you might be thinking to yourself, Adam should have never trusted her. Wives, you might be thinking, the audacity. He not only blames me, he blames God. The third chapter of Genesis is one of the truest stories ever told. If you're going to ask me, Pastor... Do you believe this story ever happened? My pastoral response would be absolutely every day of human history before God. Last week, we did discuss what makes for a good and healthy relationship, good and healthy marriage. And we said that the Bible teaches us three things, three actions that we can do to maintain good and healthy relationships. And the first was to communicate. And if we are communicating well, hopefully we are discussing the relationship and the couple learns how to complement the other, to partner, to be in partnership, to divide the workload. And we will understand that the relationship has a cost. All good and healthy relationships have a cost. We can see this theologically in the center of the good news we tell the world that God knew well before that tree was planted. God knew well before that snake ever got to Eve and Adam. God knew that to be in relationship with humanity, God was going to share the cost in Jesus Christ. The cost of his son bearing the consequence of this relationship. All relationships come with a cost. Communicate, complement, cost. Or if you do not like that alliteration, prayer 
partner, price. We can all agree, in general, that divorce is bad. Jesus would agree with that as well. And he is asked specifically about divorce in Matthew chapter 19. He allows it only if cheating has occurred. And the reason that it, I say we can all agree divorce is bad in general, in Jesus' day, divorce was frivolous, to be quite honest. A man could simply say divorce three times, and basically the wife was on her own. And remember, throughout Jesus' ministry, he is teaching us to protect the weakest among us, the widow, the orphan, and the immigrants. Whole, Jesus' whole ministry, we could see even from the minor prophets, Jesus doesn't make this stuff up. He comes from a tradition of prophets who are teaching society is only good, just, and fair if society is protecting the weakest among us, the widow, the orphan, the immigrant. So the reason Jesus has this stance on divorce is Keep in mind, he is protecting women. Up until 1950, for the most part, throughout human history, women had depended upon men for economic sustenance. So if a woman is frivolously divorced, she is now on her own. Jesus is trying to protect women. In our understanding of marriage, uh, and Pastor Marnie officiated a marriage yesterday. Similarly to baptism, we recognize three promises happening. We teach up and train up the couple that they are to love one another and promise to love one another as God has loved them in Jesus Christ. And hopefully in response to that love, of that promise of God to love them as shown in Jesus Christ, they promise to love one another. But then there is a third promise that takes place. The whole congregation promises to nurture that married couple, to love that married couple, to pray for that married couple. So if a partner breaks the promise, not only break the promise with the partner, they are breaking the promise with God and with all of Christ's church. If one partner abuse the other in any way, emotionally or physically, cheating has occurred. The promise has been broken. If you are being physically abused in your relationship, whether it is a marriage, teenagers, whatever age, do know if you are suffering physical abuse, your life is in danger. Brothers and sisters, if you know someone or suspect someone who is being abused in their relationship, please tell them their life is in danger. Come to one of the pastors. We have great resources at the Blackburn Center in Greensburg that we support and help. Good organization to help those who are victimized. And this, whether the victim is male or female, do know if you are experiencing abuse in your relationship, your life is in danger. The Bible, Paul, the Apostle Paul, he talks specifically with husbands in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25, and he views marriage, and he gets it from Jesus. The image he paints, he says, Husbands, love your wives as Jesus loved the church and gave himself for her. That's the biblical image of marriage. Sacrificing one for the other. There's always cost. And we pray, and we worship, and we pursue the light of life of Christ as Christians so our relationships do not end but flourish into eternal life. So let's learn from this story today to see how we can avoid our relationships from breaking down. 
The story begins with outside temptation. If you get hung up on a talking snake, you are missing the point. There are four characters in this story. God, man, woman, outside temptation. Theologically, evil doesn't exist. If you want to ask more questions about that statement, please see me after worship or sometime this week. But for centuries now, Christians have believed evil does not actually exist. Yes, temptation is real. Humans doing horrific and evil actions, very much real. But evil itself is nothing. Let me flush that out a bit. If we do choose our own way, without others in mind, we will find ourselves alone. If we walk down the path of our very own desires, disregarding God's purpose for our lives, we will find at the end of that path, it might be self-chosen, it might be the American dream, it might be the pursuit of happiness, but when we get to the end of the path, nothing is there. Yes, we may have hurt people along the way, and that hurt is very real. But we will find ourselves alone. Some Christians have described hell in this fashion. What is hell? Well, it is nothing. It's by yourself. Alone. The story tells us when we turn away from God, our lives will get harder. And we will find ourselves alone. From the beginning of the Bible to the end is the story that God has created us to be in community with us. And for us to be God's beloved family. God desires a community made up of independent individuals partnering together, working together to glorify God into better humanity. The snake, the snake represents the wedge that can divide people. And I love the image because I'm a guy that splits a lot of firewood. It's become my hobby. I really enjoy doing it. And a few years back, Hope and I took a marriage course that was hosted here at Nolensburg called Together Pittsburgh. And they used the image of a wedge. You have a piece of wood that you're going to split, and you start tapping the wedge in. And maybe one little complaint against your spouse. That's the first tap, right? Maybe the spouse takes one clean dish out of the dishwasher and leaves the rest of the clean for her to get up later. Another hit of wedge into it. But the most important thing this class taught us was that even very good things can act as a wedge in our relationship. Specifically children. We can all agree that children are a very good thing, a gift from God, but if we do not intentionally take time to communicate, we do not intentionally take time without our children to check up and maintain the relationship, well, there might be a few snakes in the grass. If we don't take time checking up on our relationship independently from our children, we might find those snakes. The wedge, chink, chink, until what was one now becomes two. And maybe that's the final argument. The snake can represent maybe a new boat whispering in your ear. Maybe you don't believe snakes can talk, but you've heard a larger house whispering in your ear. Maybe you don't believe snakes can talk, but you hear an expensive vacation whispering in your ear. I remember back in 2008 when a new black shiny Jeep Wrangler talked to me. <laughs> Swear to God, as God and my witness in that parking lot, that Jeep was talking to me and it couldn't get, it wouldn't, the voice wouldn't leave my head. Just 
day after day, the Jeep kept talking, week after week, until finally I talked Hope into letting me sign. Certainly, certainly there was a command given by God not to eat from the tree. But is this story more about breaking a law or breaking trust? Every good and healthy relationship begins and ends with trust. The most important lesson taught to me about parenting is making sure that my words have meaning. Another way of saying it, making sure that our boys trust the words coming out of my mouth. If I say, boys, if you do not behave right now, we are leaving worship. And they know I'm the pastor. They know we cannot leave worship. So I cannot use that as a threat. It has no meaning. I believe in business, they call this say period, do period. Say do. Do what you say and say what you do. Remember last week when we said the Bible teaches us that all of creation is created through the word. I would argue all of trust is created through words as well. If we get into the habit of not following through on what we say, relationships will break down. The reason I love reading the Bible is that Christ's Holy Spirit questions our souls. So let's end by asking a few questions. Are you like Adam and Eve? hiding from God? Are you like Adam, blaming someone else for where you are at in your relationship? Be like Eve. Believe it or not, she is the hero of this story. She is the hero because she confesses to God. She's the only truthful one in the story. The serpent tricked me, and I ate. Be honest with yourself in the presence of God. Be like Eve. Confess. For Jesus has come to invite us. Like that woman at the well, five marriages she had gone through, and Jesus is still there inviting her into good and healthy relationships. Do not hide from God. Confess like Eve. And Jesus is there, inviting us into eternal life, into good and healthy relationships when we follow his way and his life. It is in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, I preach. Amen.